Hi, I'm Don LePan, President of Broadview Press and Managing Editor of the Broadview Anthology of British Literature. Why Broadview? Why choose the Broadview Anthology rather than the Norton Anthology or the Longman? Both fine competitors. Some of you may also say, what? Broadview? What is this Broadview? I know Norton. I know Longman. Longman's part of Pearson. They're, they're huge. Norton. Long established. Large company. Broadview, I don't know, or I don't know so well. Well, let me start by telling you a few things. We are a little unusual as a company, and we are still relatively young, certainly young compared to Oxford University Press, where I began my uh, publishing career back in 1975. Uh, it was ten years after that that I founded Broadview, and more than a quarter of a century later, uh, we are somewhere between three and four million in sales revenue and uh, something still fewer than 30 of us on staff. It's a company in which you'll see managers helping out with office cleanup and you'll see the company president um, doing the rounds as a sales rep at at least a few universities. Um, it's unusual in, in a lot of ways, but um, we are a company that is competing su successfully. I think a lot of people have said with much larger companies such as Norton, such as Pearson. What about the Broadview Anthology itself? How is it different? Perhaps I should begin there by mentioning our team of general editors, a very distinguished team, beginning with medievalists Roy Liutza and Claire Waters, um, Renaissance uh, specialists Anne Lake Prescott and Joe Black, Isabel Grundy, one of the world's leading uh, experts in the literature of the 18th century, Jerome J. McGann, who is, of course, an expert in, in far more than uh, the Romantic era. Um, Victorianists, Kate Flint and Barry Qualls, uh, and Leonard Connolly, who an expert in the drama of all eras and, and um, also in literature of all sorts in the late 19th and, and 20th centuries. Beyond that team of general editors, we have had dozens and dozens of people working with us in preparing the Broadview Anthology. And we have produced what is, uh, well, I, I won't use my own words here, I will use those of Nicholas Watson of, of Harvard, um, produced a compelling alternative to the established anthologies by Norton and Longman. It's different from the very beginning. Um, we use the acclaimed Liutza translation of Beowulf, uh, which came out actually about at the same time as the uh, more famous Seamus Haney uh, translation. Both were reviewed together by Frank Kermode in the New York Review of Books, um, and we'd actually we'd worried that the Liutza translation might be swamped a little by uh, the, a, a much more famous um, uh, writer publishing a translation at the same time. But it, in fact, um, we ended up getting very favorable favorable attention. Kermode, for example, concluded that those two translations were head and shoulders above any previous translation. He, he couldn't decide between them. Perhaps Liutza was a little uh, a little closer to the original Old English. Um, the Broadview Anthology different as well in the way we present Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Uh, we have the James Winnie quite literal translation on one side. We use a facing column. Uh, so on the other side, the original alliterative Middle English. Um, we're different in the way we present Chaucer. We have illustrations for each of the tales from the Ellesmere Manuscript, um, as well as extraordinarily good notes, both with, well, throughout the anthology, but I uh, um, the Taylor and Boynig uh, work on Chaucer is, is particularly remarkable. Uh, the anthology is different in the way, and uh, moving toward the uh, to the second, uh, there's the medieval one, the, the Renaissance volume, uh, different in the way we present these sonnets. A wonderful section by Anne Lake Pres Prescott on the, um, the background of the sonnet with translations from Petrarch and so on. Um, Shakespeare sonnets, we have a larger collection of... Um, Sonnets by Shakespeare than either of our major competitors. And King Lear, I'll, I'll just stay on Shakespeare for a moment, where the folio, uh, folio and the quarto um, versions of King Lear differ substantially. Uh, three scenes, I think it is, we again use the double column format of the Broadview Anthology to advantage. We have uh, the, the folio on one side, the quarto on the other, for those scenes where the differences are substantial. So students can see um, just what's involved when people speak of there being major textual issues. Other major differences are, are dealt with in notes, but um, a treatment of King Lear that's much truer 
to what we have of Shakespeare than the diplomatic editions that are used in, in competitors. Um, here's another difference in Shakespeare. In our concise ish, uh, edition, we now do not include a Shakespeare play. That perhaps is the, um, on the face of it, the strangest decision we made for the second edition of our concise Broadway anthology. But the thing is, we have individual standalone editions now of King Lear, of Twelfth Night, in fact, of um, well over 300 different works, any of which for courses can be combined together in a shrink wrap package at no additional charge to the student for the first one. There's a nominal charge after that, but uh, for those, for example, using that example, the, um, um, the concise, if you wanted to package that with King Lear, will send out shrink wrap packages, no extra charge for the King Lear, but for those that don't want to use that particular play, don't want to use any play at all or a different play from another publisher, um, it's not... Uh, um, it, it, you, you have more, more material that you will use in the anthology. Um, the Restoration in 18th Century volume. Canonical materials, wonderfully well treated. I think Gulliver's Travels and The Rape of the Lock. Um, what's different there is that you get illustrations from early editions. Um, Non-canonical writers, the laboring class poets. Isabel Grundy prepared a wonderful uh, section on laboring class poets. Contextual materials, and these appear in all six of the volumes, um, Transatlantic Currents is one new one uh, in the 18th century volume. Um, there are several in, in each of the six, um, six volumes of the main anthology. Um, more materials of that sort, more visual material, more contextual material than either Longman or Norton. The Age of Romanticism volume, again, very strong on canonical writers, Shelley, Wordsworth, Coleridge, etc., and strong on visual material and contextual material, uh, a remarkably strong uh, section on, for example, background materials on slavery, I would say. Um, the Victorian era. A lot of Victorianists I know really appreciate having Tennyson's In Memoriam complete. That's what you'll find in the Broadview Anthology. Dickens. I think we've done something very interesting with Dickens in the second edition of Volume 5, which has just come out. Um, we have included two of his performance fictions, um, material largely from the novels, but shaped to uh, shaped into standalone fictions for his famous series of readings: the story of Little Dombey and um, from Dombey and Son, and Sykes and Nancy from Oliver Twist. Uh, both included in the new edition of Volume Five, A Christmas Carol, which we had in the former edition of, of Volume Five. Again, not in the anthology itself, but standalone Broadview Volume can be combined at no extra charge if you'd like to do a Christmas Carol. Same goes for Hard Times, Great Expectations. Um, again, more than 300 different Broadview editions can be combined in that way with an anthology. Um, oh, the, and again, in the Victorian volume, non-canonical writers. Augusta Webster, if you don't know her, I so strongly encourage you to check out Augusta Webster. Michael Field, I think, is... Um, uh, she, they, more widely known, um, a better selection of, of Michael Field and, and so many other lesser known writers in the broad view than in, in the, uh, than in competing anthologies. Volume 6, The 20th Century and Beyond, um, The Wasteland, a, a wonderful, and, and again it's available as a standalone edition for, for courses that are not using an anthology, wonderful notes, wonderful contextual materials on modernism, um, now, modern, um, we have really good sections of Joyce, of Wolf, but we don't stop there. Alone among the three competitors, we include Dorothy Richardson. Where it all begins, really, where, uh, when it comes to stream of consciousness, you'll find Dorothy Richardson in the Broadway anthology, not in the Norton, not in the Longman. Um, Post-World War II, um, again, you'll find established classics, Churchill's Top Girl, Silito's Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, um, Larkin's Church Going, um, all with excellent and consistent notes and introductions. That's something we've spent an enormous amount of time on trying to make the introductory material consistent and the notes consistent throughout the anthology. Explanation that the student needs, but without interpretation, leaving that, of course, to the, to the instructor. Um, and you'll, again, you'll find wonderful surprises. Stoppard... Um, Tom Stoppard has an extraordinarily funny short play um, uh, called Professional Foul um, about, uh, about philosophy and about football. Um, Ian McCune, a remarkable short story, Last Day of Summer. You'll find today's great English poet Caroline Duffy 
And you'll find Zadie Smith and Maid McGuckian and Simon Arbitage and Alice Oswald. You'll find for all periods just um, a, a remarkable variety of material, both in the bound books and in the website component of the anthology, which keeps growing all the time. Um, oh, I, might, I might also mention, whenever a piece is dropped from the bound book volumes of the anthology, we still include it in the website component. Um, so um, it, it's... It's not really lost if it's a if it's a become a favorite than something you still want to teach. It's still easy to make it available for your students. Overall, a remarkable range of options. Um, any combination of the full uh, of the six volumes of the full anthology, the two concise volumes. Uh, we have course packs available. Um, we uh, have offered electronic, uh, fully electronic options. We offer historical overview volumes. Details and all of these are on this site, and if you don't see what you're looking for here, uh, please phone or email us. In, in fact, more generally, we'd love to hear comments. We'd love to hear um, advice. Um, we uh, <laughs> uh, Anything you'd like to tell us about the anthology, we would like to hear, um, and, and we want to help make it the anthology uh, that, that you want. Um, yeah, we want to make... Uh, we, we want to make the Broadview Anthology your anthology. Uh, so please be in touch and um, uh, let us know with any comments, any questions you may have. Thanks very much.